At Turk and Taylor Streets in San Francisco is a monument to a little-known piece of LGBTQ plus history. On a summer night in 1966, a group of LGBTQ plus people rioted at Compton's Cafeteria. The exact date of the riot remains a mystery. Witnesses put the riots in August, three years before bar patrons rose up against police raids at the Stonewall Inn in New York City, igniting the modern gay rights movement. That's one of the things that I find most fascinating about it. It's like it was obviously a large scale event but it was almost completely forgotten. It's like, why do you remember Stonewall, but you don't remember Compton's? Historian Susan Stryker's documentary, Screaming Queens, tells the story of what likely happened that night when a group of trans women and gay men clashed with police in a riot that spilled out into the streets. All of the sugar shakers went through the windows and the glass doors. I have no doubt that the riot happened much as was described in the earliest records of it. Tensions were rising in this pocket of the tenderloin at the time, and this film discovered in the ABC7 News archives provides the first video evidence of the community's fight for equality before and after the uprising at Compton's Cafeteria in San Francisco's Tenderloin District. The video shows people protesting outside of the restaurant in July. It seems like the riot took place in the weeks after that picket. The picketers were from a group called Vanguard, formed in 1965, to protest the treatment of what we now call LGBTQ plus people in the Tenderloin. It was made up of a lot of people who were shunned by uh, mainstream middle-class society. Historian Joseph Plaster has written extensively about Vanguard, widely considered to be the first gay liberation organization in the United States. And because they were militant, um, they had a, an agenda of economic justice and sexual liberation, and they were forcefully speaking out for what we would call gay rights. Because we go to bed with men or take dope or something like that does not mean that we are uh, inhuman and have no feelings. Hoping to cut down on the rampant vice in the Tenderloin, city leaders ordered a crackdown on the illicit activities in the area. One month before the riots are believed to have happened, the coffee shop began going after young people who would hang out late at night at its tables. The entire economy um, in this district revolved around sex work. Um, a lot of the businesses, including Compton's Cafeteria, benefited financially from the trade in sex. I believe they just want us out because they do not think that we uh, belong as in their society, their part of society. <coughs> they, don't, they do not realize that uh, if it were not for the youth in the Tenderloin, that their business would probably collapse. Why do you say that? Uh, the Tenderloin is made up mainly of youth between the ages of 12 and 24, and these people are the people who give them most of their uh, money. The public protests divided some in the gay and lesbian community. The older, more organized groups weren't happy with these new young activist public protests. Is there a split within the gay world about what these people are doing, picketing Comptons? I believe so, yes. In what way? Well, there's... They, some believe in one way or other, I mean, they like to dress primitively and act primitively with makeup and such as this. And there's the average person, or is it around the gay life, uh, doesn't feel this way. Are they giving you a bad name, in other words? I believe that they give everybody a bad name. Tenderloin as well? Yeah, tenderloin as well, yeah. Sometime in the weeks after those protests outside, a riot erupted inside Compton's cafeteria. No TV footage, there was no newspaper coverage of it. And yet, we have eyewitnesses to the event who, whose testimony all agrees with each other. We have written records written several years after the fact that were saying like, hey, you know, remember when that thing happened at the corner of Turk and Taylor? Even the police records from that night have vanished. But Vanguard did not. Market Street always had its variety of pushes, but last night a different type took to the streets. A group called Vanguard is trying to clean up the trash. 
In September, Vanguard pushed forward, publicly calling for a cleaning of the streets to make the tenderloin safer for the people who call it home. How do you hope to accomplish this uh, change, Mark? Well, the first thing is through symbolic demonstrations that will convince the people in San Francisco that there's a terrible problem here that will have to be dealt with and dealt with immediately. Then secondly, we are trying to recruit interest in the community for the development of a coffee house in the tenderloin to get these kids off the street in a situation where other professional persons can relate to them and provide them some help and assistance for their problems. Excuse me, ladies, can I talk to you for a second? Tension was clearly still in the air. I don't know. I'm sorry. We have a official spokesman. I'm I'm sorry. sorry. Good me. You don't want to handle this. Vanguard disbanded after about two years. But the legacy of their actions, caught on film decades ago, is now helping to fill in the timeline of LGBTQ plus history. At the film footage of the uh, of the picket, and you look at the film footage of people on Market Street, it seems like there are like two points on a story where the riot would fit right in the middle of it. We just don't have the the smoking gun. You know, documentation of the riot itself. I mean, the videos are incredible. This is the only footage, video footage, I'm aware of, of the pickets in front of Compton's cafeteria, uh, the only video footage that I'm aware of of the street sweep action. Um, so in that way, they contribute to the, the historical record in really dynamic way. In San Francisco, Reggie Yuki, ABC7 News.